What is going on, everybody, and welcome to another weekly update. And what I like to do in these videos is provide you some upcoming earnings, some potential events that can affect the market, potentially even pivot the market. If that sounds like something you're interested in. Consider subscribing as I do provide daily updates as well to get you prepared for the day and the week ahead in this glorious market. So what an interesting week. The first week of 2023 is in the books, uh, which is good to see. Uh, the nice thing to see in the beginning of the month, uh, the beginning of the year, uh, again, it was a short week. You have to keep that in mind. Uh, but it was good to see bigger moves and moves that stuck uh, to some extent. Uh, not saying that the volatility has gone away. I think we're going to see a lot more volatility coming up. Uh, but the nice thing is, is I think we're getting the market might be getting a little bit more used to uh, what is currently going on. Uh, we're starting to see some. Let me actually hurry up, and pull this up uh, just for time's sake here. Uh, but we're actually starting to kind of see inflation. There's some seems to be some grasp on inflation at this point. Uh, but even the Fed are talking about uh, the fact that inflation is they have some handle on it. But again, they want those levels right around that three, four percent uh, before they can really start doing much of anything. Uh, so with that being said, um, this year is going to be very interesting. It's going to be a very pivotal year. I think we do have uh, the problem I think is a lot of people are trying to time that pivot a lot sooner than they think it's going to happen just based off of data. Uh, we have to understand that these high rates and the damage that they're causing, it's not so much the inflation. The inflation started it, but uh, ultimately know that the the high rates that the feds continue to hold is causing a lot of issues within uh, the economy. And what's misleading a lot of it too, is you look at um, massive layoffs. Who is actually getting laid off? A lot of the very uh, uh, more pristine jobs, if you will, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, the more um, high paying salary jobs are, are getting dumped where a lot of a lot of the growth has been uh, essentially in that whole travel and recreation uh, sector at this point. And so uh, it's interesting to see and to see it when that does roll over. Uh, again, a lot of these things are timing and things I've been talking about. Uh, I still believe a lot of things are still in a really bad state and we're not really truly getting uh, correct numbers. Uh, this is that whole salary gap that people have been talking about. You may hear whispers of this um, and how the numbers, they look great. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, growth in jobs this week. Uh, unemployment was down, which was interesting to see. Uh, but I think a lot of that stuff is very misleading. And we're about ready to really get into the meat of what could potentially be happening. Um coming up because now we're starting earnings and this is what matters uh, and what means a lot. And we're going to get a lot of data this week uh, that's going to kind of try to guide us into 2023, uh, which is going to be interesting. So Tuesday, we do have Powell. He speaks in Sweden. Um, I'm assuming that's going to be an open forum. And so anytime, again, there's an open forum. Again, if there's if it's at all a speaking engagement or a pre-recorded video or it is... Um, essentially a statement right uh, anything from like that from powell isn't going to have a dramatic impact but if because he'll essentially just regurgitate what he's been saying but if there's any kind of open forum where he is speaking and fielding questions that's when it becomes very volatile anytime that man speaks you need to be listening because he moves markets nonetheless tuesday we have core cpi again still going to have weight we do not want this thing shooting back up. There's some other different scenarios I'm kind of looking out at um, that could potentially all of, because of, all of a sudden cause a spike in inflation. And that is what we do not want. If inflation shoots back up, it essentially resets the clock and what we were dealing with all last year back into this year. And that's exactly not what we want. Uh, we have seen inflation come down, but we definitely have to see how the core is again. Food is still high. Rentals are still high. Uh, that's what matters. And again, those are pulled out. Yes, I've seen gas prices come down. I've seen a lot of other things come down. But when you're trying to pay for basic necessities, again, 
uh, is what matters. So again, we're going to coming to earnings. We're going to see uh, the banks, uh, which we do have on Friday. We got some coming up on Friday. Let's scroll down here a little bit. Upcoming pivots in February 1st going to be the mo uh, monetary policy. Uh, so that's the first one we are watching right there. Uh, earnings start this week. Uh, Thursday, we have TSM. Why is TSM important? Uh, semiconductors. We want to see what's going on with semiconductors. Um, there's already been a lot of bad things coming out about chips. Uh, this will move the market on the chips and essentially ultimately gauge what's going to happen with big tech. And understand, um, you know, last week we just had uh, Tesla release delivery numbers and they uh, missed pretty bad. And so being said, um, again, it all starts with chips. So TSM is going to have a big impact and they normally report uh, before any of these other big techs and everything else. So we're going to see how much of an impact that does have and where they are for projecting as it can hold a lot of weight. Friday, JPM and uh, Bank of America, there's our first... Uh, bank, central bank um, earnings, and they're going to be in the morning. Uh, TSM is in the morning on Thursday, and JPM and Bank of America on Friday morning. And it's interesting to see because normally uh, they've been holding bank earnings. It, you've noticed it seems almost every year, uh, depending on what's going on with the market, like these earnings are set up a specific way. And uh, essentially, uh, on typically, if we think that the the market's going to do well. Uh, the bank earnings are normally beginning of the week. Uh, they are right dead Friday morning, essentially, uh, before we go into the weekend. So that way, if there's any crazy moves, uh, you're going to get a big move on Friday with the bank earnings. Uh, it's going to give insight into how everything's been. And we've already noticed a couple different um, meetings that the these banks' CEOs have had. They've already talked about negative GDP loss. They've talked a lot of about a lot of different things. Again, roll-offs continue to come off with more layoffs. Uh, again, we're getting a lot of misinformation. So you're getting one, you get a lot of push and pull, which data is saying, no, things are getting better. Uh, some data is saying things are getting better. Other data is saying it's not. CEOs are saying it's not. Uh, you got a lot of people saying that things are going to get a lot worse. And this is why I rely heavy, more heavily on uh, the earnings and what's currently going on. But you have to also understand that some uh, CEOs also give misinformation, guided information. So it's really depicting the ones that are really kind of uh, giving you uh, the best truth you can find out there and going with that. Um, and then again, have an overall thesis on everything that is currently going on. National average, we're still waiting on uh, new numbers on that. Uh, watch list. So uh, SPX, if you noticed... This is why, again, why I keep this up here. This is starting to creep back up. Uh, again, it's going to creep back up even more and more. Once we have big tech earnings, uh, you'll notice that this will probably be sitting at 120 again. Again, they're trying to price it in. Again, if the banks do bad, uh, that you'll see this uh, explode next week as well. And then we have uh, Tesla at 10, uh, which Tesla has been really kind of uh, bogged down just because of everything that's been going on. Uh, so you haven't really seen this uh, very high. Apple isn't very high, but what you're noticing is BA is extremely high. BA broke out uh, bank, obviously, at the end of the week. Uh, so they're trying to incorporate that um, moving forward. So, so I talk about when you start getting the earnings, uh, the market tries to price all of that in, in the options, and that gives you an idea and a gauge of what the market is expecting. Uh, and sometimes we've seen some crazy, ridiculous, and sometimes when these numbers, like SPX in particular, like when SPX is trading um, like 130, 140 expected move, like you can't make, it's hard to make money off of options. And that's where you need to be smart about everything and understand what's going on there. And so this is good to gauge where essentially the normal market pricing is on a specific stock that you're playing. And then uh, you kind of know what you're dealing with going into the week. Um, and then again, you know what the average is. You know when, okay, well, there's a big event going on and it's going to be harder to play. So typically you stay away from options when they're way too high from the average. So not saying that you can't make money, but it is definitely difficult and it's easier to find other ones that aren't, that don't, don't, have, don't have that priced in so much. And this is where you can start talking about essentially um you know say tsm reports uh you can look at nvidia 
or AMC for essentially um, an alternative play into TCM because TCM might price in too much, might price in way over the expected move, and then uh, you can't make any money on TCM. But if you played NVIDIA, um, you know, you can get that, that that additional secondary move that's based off of chips uh, that allow you to capture the move better and, and actually that move not be priced in. So that's kind of what we're looking at there uh, moving forward. So this is pretty much what we got for the week. Again, it's going to be a very big week, especially because now we got earnings. It's a new year. We kind of want to gauge how things are. Uh, it's going to be a very exciting week, I think, in my opinion, first full week of the year. Uh, then we got uh, Monday off, I believe, uh, next Monday off. And so you're going to have another short week again coming up. But with that being said, let's look at some charts here. And so big uh, concern on Friday, obviously, the, the jobs numbers, the non-farms were looking uh, good. Uh, so the market ripped pretty good on Friday. Something I said there would be a big volatile move on Friday. Non-farms are going to play uh, more weights until we can kind of gauge uh, or get more monetary policy and kind of determine where that's at. But for right now, uh, I think we, we are headed. I, we talked about a Christmas rally. Uh, typically, that happens between now and before big tech. Um, but the problem is, is big tech is about two weeks away. Maybe this week we rip, and in the next week, um, I could see us ripping all the way to the end of this week only because of the fact that um, we have the banks. The banks aren't reporting until Friday. Uh, so let's assume everything's hunky-dory, and let's just run, get that uh, pre-earnings run up into Friday if things are bad. Um, then we start sinking from there back down. But I think we can make a, a very strong – if the market can open up above 3900 on Monday – uh, I think we have a very strong possibility that we find ourselves up at the 4K mark uh, coming into Friday. And then on Friday, depending on how the banks are, uh, I think this thing could potentially run into Wednesday. And then we kind of pull back a little bit, waiting for bank earnings. Bank earnings are good. We break out over 4K. Bank earnings are bad. We head back down, uh, waiting to see what's going to happen with big tech or potentially float around that 3900 then play that uh, the 4K mark, the 3900 mark, uh, like we've pretty much been doing for the past, um, almost for the past month. We've just been playing this this 100-point range. I think we're just going to move up and play a 100-point range to we kind of get earnings, then could potentially break us out or potentially break us down, I think is what I am looking at, kind of what I'm gauging for this uh, particular earnings. Again, there's going to be a lot of um, data that's coming out. Again, you do not want core. Again, that Thursday morning is going to be important. If core creeps back over uh, the 7.2 mark, we're going to be in trouble. Uh, you don't want it in the high sevens. You don't want it in the eights. Uh, by God, you don't want it in the nines. Um, but if it starts jumping up back into the eights, uh, the market's going to panic because that just means uh, the Fed are going to continue to hammer rates again, and and you're absolutely going to kill the market if that happens. And so that is something you have to keep in mind of, even though it's not my priority right now in front of gauge with the consumer is, it is still always on my mind that if it does pop back up, it's going to be a major issue. So we do have to keep that in mind. Uh, but that's what we're looking at. If we can't hold above this again, if we can't hold above the 3900 come Monday. Uh, again, I think we're just going to come right back down into the zone. We'll have to see. Maybe that's what the case is. But again, it really just depends on how we open Either one, we get up here into this level and then we play this 100 point range, or we pull back down to this range and play that 39 to 3,800 uh, range uh, coming in this week. So we shall see the dollar. The dollar again had a very strong move uh, going into Friday and then just absolutely collapsed once they hit that 105. And that 105 is a wall, but if it can break above that, watch out, bulls. Uh, but if bulls can break past, essentially, roughly around the 103 mark here, uh, then the bulls got some room to start running. Uh, again, I think it's very premature to think that we're going to reverse this thing. Uh, this thing is going to take a while to reverse. A pivot is going to take a while. But I think it heavily depends on the Fed. And the Fed aren't going to comply. This thing is not turning. You're going to get a lot more pump and dumps on hopium of things turning uh, before the before we actually truly pivot 
you know, I'm trying to find that true pivot, not this, this hopium pivot that's been going on for, you know, four or five months. So with that being said, let's, we can look at Bitcoin real quick. I haven't really been looking at Bitcoin. Bitcoin's at consolidating really well. Again, I still think if there's one more strong move down, this thing, this Bitcoin's going to follow with the market. Aside from that, I do really like this consolidation. But one thing is for sure that a big move is coming. Uh, the, the thing is, is it's going to be down or up. We don't know. It could go down just as quick as it could go up. So you have to keep that in mind. Yes, we are very oversold. But um, even the general market, but things are still bad. Things are not good. There's still a lot of issues out there. So just be keep, keep that in mind uh, moving forward. Now, Tesla, again, this thing's been absolutely just crushed. Uh, but again, one thing I do really like about Tesla is, in my opinion, it is one of the best, if not the best company out there. Um, Elon set up a phenomenal infrastructure there, and they got a patent for boats and planes uh, for electric engines. And so I'm really excited about that for their future and where they could potentially be going. Uh, again, if you're looking five, 10 years down the road, uh, that, that just opened up a whole new ball game for them. And I'm really excited about that. I'm really looking forward to the future with Tesla. Uh, and so I do want to be accumulating on the sell off, even if it continues to sell off. Something I've said to this point too, is that a lot of the meat on the bone is on value stocks and financials. They held up the market last year. Uh, they are very overextended right now. And if uh, this is the time, right? Earnings might be the, the the change that's going to sink this thing down really, really bad. And so we have to be mindful of that. And so that's what we're watching. Again, biggest key here is to be cautious uh, and not sink everything in at one time. And, and just be cautious is all I can forewarn you. Tesla's multiple times, even this week, um, uh, Thinkorswim stopped people from buying Tesla, le leveraging more Tesla because people just keep buying every dip on Tesla, which is fantastic. But that doesn't mean this thing can't drop down to 60. Uh, just be mindful of that. And you don't want to get margin called uh, because of that. So nonetheless, we'll see how it goes. But again, it's still pulling way far away from that line which is uh, sitting at the 132. Again, we could get a nice pop for earnings, but when it hits that, it's going to reject it pretty hard. Uh, question is, is where's is the market sentiment going to be after that rejection? Uh, is that going to make a um, new lower high, which could potentially lead us up or what the case is? So we definitely have to watch, but their earnings is again on the 25th of this month. So uh, that's going to be very pivotal. Tesla, Apple, What's the lockdown's been doing in Q4 for Tesla and Apple is the question. Again, there's a lot of uh, data coming out that's saying a lot of the retail sales are not looking good. Amazon could be hit really bad. And again, you have to also understand that if sales are bad, uh, a lot of these companies aren't going to be advertising. So Google is going to get hit really bad. That's a big aspect of their business. All these companies hold big weight on the index. You have to be mindful of that moving forward. Uh, Apple, again, the daily still holding um, holding this pattern for now. We definitely want it over the 130. Uh, you got some resistance, really hard resistance here, the 135 now. Um, again, if this thing's going to turn, yeah, this would be one of the ones that can turn very well. Again, their earnings is on February 2nd, so essentially the last week of January. Uh, first week of February is when we just start getting some big earnings. At, uh, big tech earnings are really key to watch out on and the moves that are going to come there. Uh, so we definitely want to keep this one on watch again. It really depends on what happens this week in the next couple of weeks. Monetary policy, we need digestion of some of the banks. Uh, again, it's going to be extremely important how this thing rolls out for 2023. We need everything to comply. Again, your front runners are going to be your earnings uh, to give you an idea of where things are at. And BA, again, value. Again, this is extremely overextended. You don't want to see this. This doesn't tell me this is good. There's going to be a pivot. Uh, this is not what you want to see. Again, um, no retest, nothing. Uh, just kind of sat flat and then just building up and pushing again. Again, their earnings is on the 
on the 25th, so along with Tesla. So we got Boeing on the same day. Um, it's going to the last week of January is going to be a big week, uh, and then the first week of February are going to be big weeks. Uh, very pivotal in a natural cycle. It's a very pivotal time of year anyway, as we typically after this earnings uh, in a normal cycle we typically sell off and pretty heavy, and then we uh, we kind of hit a floor around uh, June-ish, May, June-ish, and then around that point, we typically head back up for the end-of-year rally. Um, so I'm kind of trying to gauge how, this, how that's going to fit in with a normal cycle uh, at, at, that we're currently in right now with this very historical cycle that we're in. Um, so we'll see on that one. And then we have JPM at the end of the week. Again, very overextended. Uh, can it break the one? 39 is the question. Uh, if not, it's been holding roughly that 130. Uh, very overextended move uh, to correct it back down to normal. You're looking at least down to the 117. There's a strong possibility if they uh, if they don't do well on Friday. Again, it's funny that earnings is on Friday. Uh, so we could get a really, like I said, a really nice rally going into Wednesday. Um, that would lead us into the core. Hopefully core is good. Uh, hopefully banks are good. If you get core and banks to be good, uh, you could probably have a really good, um, a really good run into next week as well. Um, very strong run potentially. Uh, now if core is bad, core jumps up, you can just say the hell with everything and it's just going to sink anyway. Uh, but, um, again, the banks, they have to comply. Maybe core is good. Banks, not so good. Then it's a different issue. You have to understand that it starts to bring more to light, more to service the things that we talk that, okay, well, inflation is no longer the issue. It, it will be there. It was still going to be an issue because the Fed is what is gauging uh, their rates at is, is what's going on with inflation. And they aren't going to let inflation win. It will drive this economy in the ground. And that is exactly what is happening. So this pivot that people are hoping for, I understand it. I understand there could be a pivot in people thinking that, the Fed could let off, and a lot of people tried to tell the Fed that. And I completely understand it. If the Fed was to let off the gas, yes, uh, it would ease uh, on the economy, and the economy would be able to uh, potentially recover, essentially allowing the market to recover. But people just want the market to recover, but you have to understand, just because the stocks go up doesn't mean the world's going to get better. That inflation is going to creep keep uh creep right back in and start ripping and so this is what the fed is trying to avoid by right? keeping rates at a high uh at a high essentially high rate so that the that they can allow uh inflation to dissipate a lot more which means a lot more job losses uh and a lot more a lot more damage yet to be seen so we just have to keep that in mind uh so jpm sitting there again if things are bad i see jpm Hitting right back down to 117. Golden Sachs uh, is barely holding. They were 343 right now. Again, that breaks that. You get support of 325 and then the 281. Uh, could be a higher low here. Could pop right back up uh, to the 382. Strong possibility. I don't play banks. I, I do like to watch them because I want to see their moves because uh, they do affect the index a lot. So, And then you got Bank of America. It's already been slammed after the comments. Uh, that they made uh, about a month ago. So let's see. I wouldn't be surprised if it pumps up to at least 36 uh, before, again, this this rally going into Friday. Then you got core and banks on Friday. So the end of this week is going to be very big. Uh, Tuesday, again, is going to be very big with Powell. Anytime that man speaks, you want to be listening to what he's saying. Uh, again, he's going to be very mindful of what he's saying. So just keep that in mind. But um, that's pretty much what I got. Uh, this video is pretty long. My videos have been pretty long because there's a lot of data points that are, that are trying to set up and I'm trying to gauge this pivot against some really good data sets. I think in my opinion that are going to help gauge us when we could potentially have a pivot. Again, I don't see a pivot in Q1 at all. Um, it's not saying the market can't pivot, but we have to get through earnings. We have to get through some really bad stuff first and then potentially Q2, Q3. I think we could start seeing a pivot in the market. It's not saying the Fed will pivot, but I think there could be a potential pivot in the market. Um, maybe this is when the catalyst happens around Q2 at some point, uh, maybe even Q1, and then uh, sells off the market just enough to where this thing could pivot. 
And then uh, I th- I, because I honestly don't think the Fed is going to pivot until next year. Uh, but it's not going to mean that the market itself is not going to pivot before then. I think the market could very well pivot before then. Uh, but just be mindful that uh, I still believe there's a there's a move in there that's going to happen. Um, that's just going to potentially bring this down even lower. So, again, not financial advice. But nonetheless, I do appreciate you for listening to me rant and, and giving my technicals. So if you made it this far, go ahead and drop a like. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.